All right, everybody, welcome back to the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast, brought to you by Phelps Game Calls, professional grade game calls made for every hunter. If you're trying to get close with elk, turkey, predators, or waterfowl, Phelps has you covered. That's right. So go to phelpsgamecalls.com. Get them close. All right, everybody, today we have Dustin from the Rugged Arts in. We also have Luke Wagner, who's in the background. He will not be mic'd up or anything, but he is. Here from Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's working on some uh, brown liquid bird dog. What is that bird dog? Blackberry flavored that's, whiskey. That's not quite the way we want to start the show. No. This thing here's off the chain with this blackberry stuff. So it looks good if you I know, wasn't driving. In Luke's it time, it's it like six o'clock. So. <laughs> that stuff out of here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> If we start that, it'll be a really long podcast and none of it'll make sense. <laughs> this may not make sense anyway. So we're, yeah. uh, well, we're not really winging it. We're going to talk about late season elk. Uh, Dustin and I were able to get out for a couple days and do some elk hunting. And yeah, we're going to, we're going to start off with that. Yeah. Where'd so, you go? So where'd you guys go and what gate did you go into? Well, we're not going to say where we went. <laughs> I tried to get them going with it. He's too quick. But it's uh, further down south in Washington State. New um, area for both of you, or for, for one of you. For me, for myself. Um, Dustin's been out there a few times. Uh, in this unit, it is three-pointer better, or antlerless, or elk. But it's also deer season, too, but it's uh, buck only. Right. So it's any buck. Unfortunately, because we saw a ton of does. I had a doe at two feet. Like, I could have stabbed it with my arrow in my hand. Yeah. It was, it was nuts. <laughs> times. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I didn't really have a shot. It jumped out of the bushes, landed right in front of me, and then jumped away. Right. Took off. Yeah. So, I mean, I didn't have a shot. I wouldn't have had time to pull my bow back, but it was pretty crazy. Yeah, so, we got this uh, set up to go hunt down in that area, and I told David, bring your mountain bike. I wanted to make sure that he was feeling up to it knowing that he had already spent like 100 miles on a mountain bike in the early season. And so we went down there, and on Sunday, last weekend, um, it started off really slow. We saw that three-point in the morning uh, after we went in about six miles on the bikes. Yeah, we saw at least one side was three. I couldn't see the other side. I think it was maybe two or three, and this was a buck. Um, This was not an elk, but we bumped a a really nice-sized buck, and if we were – Rifle hunting, that sucker would have been on the ground. We'd be talking about a dead deer. Yeah. That's a story every time, you know? Right. Like, That's how it goes. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, or, you know, there's always opportunity with something else, like cruise missile. No matter, you know? <laughs> cruise like, missile. Whatever, if we had some, something that could have got to that point. Some drones animal, with some yeah. uh, rifles on we them. Have, we could have <laughs> taken advantage of it in that situation. Yeah. But I want to kind of redirect you guys and get you going and, and, and um, kind of recap what happened. Yeah, go for it. You, I didn't go on the hunt, so I'm I'm full of questions. But yeah, uh, you had you hunted a Saturday and Sunday. We hunted a Sunday and a Thursday. Okay, so two separate mm-hmm. same weekend though. So same like, same week. Same so week. Like Thursday, then Friday, Saturday, then you went back Sunday. No, no other way around. You hunted Sunday, three days off. Hunt Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So you hunted the last day of the season. Very last day of the season. Okay, yeah. Okay. The final hoorah. That's yep. The, the hail mary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oddly enough, that's what I call. Uh, one of the podcasts on on or one of the episodes on my podcast is Hail Mary. Yeah, <laughs> we all have a Hail Mary play. Yeah, yeah. It was it was um. Well, it. I mean, yeah. The Hail Mary was was actually intense. It was an awesome freaking day. Super nice. Everything was frozen on the ground, but um, yeah. The Sunday before that, though, um, we were seeing a bunch of sign in the morning. Oh and yeah. And there was. There, but there was nothing after that buck until we were heading out. Yeah, we didn't see the three elk that we jumped on the way out until 3.30. And so we hung out in a in a, a clear cut all day. Didn't see nothing. This is the Hail Mary day. No, this is Sunday. The yeah, this first is Sunday. Day. Sorry. Yeah. So you were on, so you were on, you went in mm-hmm. six or seven miles or something. Then yep. you were in this spot and you didn't see anything or you did first day on Sunday. We We did, but on our way out. Okay. Right. When you went back on Thursday, mm-hmm. is that where you saw the elk? 
we saw them from that position, but not in that clear cut. Does that make sense? So, so where you spotted them leaving on, on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Was not where we spotted them on Thursday. Thursday. Right. No. But on Thursday, you were back in that general vicinity. No. Not what, no. So, so we went, so where we went on Sunday, we went back there on Thursday. Uh, we trudged around for like a while. Yeah. Um, so we got in probably an hour later, maybe 30 minutes later. Than we wanted to. Than we wanted to. Um, and then we just kind of walked around and we went back to that clear cut and I was actually glassing other clear cuts that are like miles away, like miles away. And then, um, I was, I just had my 10 by 42s. Uh, so you could be like, if I had a 300 wind mag, I could kill that over there. No, it was, oh. it was like further than yeah, that. It was like, like I would rank hundred yards when we spotted him. If I had a 50 Maybe. BMG, I could kill that over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some military training. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched American Sniper three times. <laughs> My cock down has nothing on me. Um, but anyways, we so that was, we're jumping into Thursday now. We did spot a bunch of elk on Sunday. Yeah, so on we, the way out. We bumped three on the way out. We thought we were going to put a play on them, but they just, they were gone. They boogie. It, it was nuts. Yeah. And then we spotted about 12, 10 to 12 elk. Closer. Closer to the. To the like like yeah. two miles from the truck on our way out. But. Same situation. Dark darkness came and we couldn't even see our pins. So there was we got as close as like ninety something yards. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's rough because it's getting dark here earlier. Yeah, yeah. If, I mean, if it was summertime, it would have been on. Oh, it was yeah. like four thirty. Like, yeah, yes, we still got five hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. You think you think after watching we're, when we were at your house the other day watching the YouTube shows and they're hunting these moose and they're like super far away. Like, oh yeah, we can get there. Or do you think that those times are hunting those uh, animals is when it doesn't get dark? They have like twenty hours to hunt that animal, or they just can stay. And you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, because like, they're up in Alaska here. and they. I mean, it's probably doesn't even get dark. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like like three in the a.m. and they have success more because there's no hours. It's just you have to be able to like keep visual contact, and then take a nap, and then you get up in a couple hours, and then your buddy's like, "Oh yeah, it's over here." So you can kind of shift work it. I would, or do you think it's just like, oh yeah, it's, we have to get this done by four thirty. We're gonna miss this thing at night. Well, I haven't seen a video in Alaska where it really gets dark. You know, I don't know because I don't know if they have like a uh, like a time zone. Like you can only hunt between these hours. Like I don't know Alaska's stuff, but man, that would totally make sense. That'd be awesome. You could yeah. pretty much you could take shifts. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, could. I'm gonna take a three hour nap. You mind? You mind taking the glass? Nope. No, I think they have an hour, an hour time frame. I'm, but I'm, I'm not for sure. Don't quote me. I haven't hunted up there. So. Yeah, that'd be cool though. Figure that'd that be nice out. to find out. Yeah, that'd be something to look. I, into. I don't Everybody's probably like there. these dummies. It, of course, they have a time frame. You know, like I don't, I don't know. But it sounds <laughs> yeah, I like I haven't looked at their rule books. I have no idea. I've never you know, hunted they're Alaska. Heavily on uh, assistance and stuff like that. So if you were, if you're like, yeah, if we we're trying to sustain ourselves, we wouldn't take a nap. We would just hunt till we got what we needed. Yeah. So I don't know if it's um that way but anyhow kind of thought i had so you're just watching that show i was like <laughs> how long would it take for you to go four miles through the sh- through the brush in alaska and to get this moose like if it's dark at 4 30 because they're no more north than us right mm-hmm. then i mean it would be pretty much you'd run out of daylight yeah i know they have day well it has to be not daylight right because they have time where it never really gets daylight and they have times where it never really gets dark yeah, yeah that, that depends on where you're at but yeah I think well, that's like it, the more, more northern north, portion. Yeah, I know Alaska. I don't think like Anchorage is that way. I don't know where they were hunting. The southern but end, isn't it? Anchorage, yeah. Yeah. Well, then they'd be on like what we're on, dark at four thirty. You know what I'm saying they'd be they'd have designated like this is a dark time. What I'm saying is they have a, they have a time of year where it's just light. Yeah. And then they have a time of See, year. We, we got Jamie over here. We have I a mean, time of year where it's just dark. <laughs> it says up. two months of the year. Months surrounding summer solstice, Alaska enjoys 24 hours a day. Nice light. So, but I mean, if your hunting season so summer was solstice, in there, I mean, that's when they're hunting. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, it could be long ass hunting days. Yeah. You're like, we got 34 hunters in here, and people are only hunting for eight hours at a time. You know, I mean, they're freaking on that. I'll tell you what, I, f- I feel like Thursday we could have hunted all day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, especially once we got on those elk. Like, 
So we're just standing there. So one fast point. forward to Thursday, the Hail Mary day. Mm-hmm. We trudge around for a couple hours. When we come back, it's kind of close to lunchtime. Mm-hmm. I'd say kind of close to lunchtime. Um, we take a little break, get the packs off, you know, and then I just start glassing these different ridges. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm, that stump looks funny. There was only like <laughs> two clear cuts that we could see from where we were. And it was kind of funny because just before he glassed that spot, he was like, man, I feel like there should be animals over there. And then he's glassing. He's like, Dustin, what power are your binos? I'm 10. Check that spot out over there where it comes down like this to a V just above that dead tree. And I'm like, okay. Soon as I put my binos on it, I'm like, that's an elk. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, I was using this like busted stick. I was like my tripod. I was putting my binos on there because they weren't. Uh, there was two elk there, but they weren't moving. But they were really shiny. I'm like, man, you know how elk, their backs can look like a dang stump, you know, and then their bottoms are just brown mm-hmm. or black from that far away. It just looks black. God dang it. Like, that looks like it could be an elk. I have, like, 10 by 42, so I think you have, 10 like, by 10 by 50. So it's a, a little bit more clarity, bringing in a b- bit more light. But right when he puts his binos on there, he's like, Oh, yeah, the head moved. I was like, son of a gun. I've been looking at these wings for like 10 minutes. <laughs> so then I'm, so he's on the like stick and I'm on his back. Yeah. I have like my he's elbow. He's using me as a tripod. At I'm this using, point. I have my elbow like in his shoulder <laughs> so I could like be steady, you know, like, oh. Yeah. I was like, dude, how far do you think that is? We only saw the three. We only saw three at the beginning. Uh, and so we thought that they were the same three we bumped on Sunday you know, three days before. And it looked like they were feeding down and going to come over to where we were. So I was like, yo, we can get to that spot that they're at right now. And he's like, really? And so we brought up on X and we're looking at it. And sure enough, yeah, there's a road. We had to go back, take a right. And there's a road kind of led most of the way there to that clear cut, but came around up on top. And so I was like, look, if we follow that road and then we jump off right there, we'll be at the clear cut at the bottom. You know, or maybe we'll cut them off somewhere in between. So we're like, yeah. So we hike back down to the bikes and we head out. And then we get to that, that one spot where we are uh, another like little like, clearing uh, landing. It looked like a dead end. And there was a spot through some trees that we could see. And so we were trying to verify where they were. And that's when we spotted four more. Yeah. And there were seven. We're like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. High five. Ready to close the books on this season. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. we're. Well, we're still just kind of optimistic, you know. We're looking at all these elk, and we're like, all right, well, they look like they're kind of feeding down, but then there's some up on top, and they're just all over the freaking place. So we're just like, all right, we're going to take this other, like, little spur road. We're going to go down and and try to get into this clear cut and try to put a play on these elk. Yeah. Well, from on X, it didn't really look, like, too terrible. No, it didn't. It looked super easy. But we had to go down, up. And then back down another, um, like, creek. Yeah. We actually, uh, yeah, so it didn't look that bad. But then once we started busting down it, you know, and <laughs> we crossed that first little creek. And then we crossed the second one. You fell in. Yeah. <laughs> I went to go, um, like, like, I don't know, rock skipping over this. I mean, it was pretty wide. I don't know how far it was. It's probably probably like, 10 feet across. Yeah. Well, right when I was getting ready to, like, take my little leap, I slipped off the rock and kind of went in. I mean, I didn't fall in, but my boots were in there. Hey, let me sensationalize the story, okay? We got to make it a little juicier. (laughs) Yeah, uh, all I heard was a splash because he was behind me. So I spun around real quick, and I almost literally fell in, and uh, he was fine. So we kept on. (laughs) Yeah, and he's like, are you wet? Are your boots wet? Or blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, well, my boots are wet, but not inside my boots. Yeah. Yeah. Late season, the Krispies came in handy. They came in handy, yeah, because it was cold. So then we got up to the bottom of that clear cut, and we're looking around, and we're like, where'd they all go? Yeah? Yeah. Lost them. We lost them. We're like, they were just here. They should be here. We should have either, like, crossed paths with them, smelt them, heard them, something, and they're not there. And so, like, David sat down. I thought he was super bummed. I, I don't know how you were feeling at that moment, but your body expressions was like, well, that's over. <laughs> and 
I wasn't I wasn't bummed. I was like, I need to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> it was like two ravines, two creek crossings, up and down two different ridges to get to this clear cut. And I mean, it was like straight down and straight up, straight down, straight up to get to this clear cut. And I was like, looking at the roads like, dang it, man, we could have just rode like, right to this this spot and walked in, you know, but I was, whatever. Yeah. We yeah. stayed warm that way. Yeah, yeah, we did. It was it was cold. So I'm um, like 28 degrees. Yeah, it was cold. It was super cold. But there was an, another little knob next to us. So as I'm looking at the hill, the clearing, or the clear cut, I'm looking at it, and I can tell about halfway up, it looks like it benches out, like like a shelf. And I'm like, I'll bet they're up there still, bedded down or something. And he's like, okay, well, let's go over here up on top of this knob and see if we can see anything. We get up there. Sure enough, we see the butt of one little elk. Well, I shouldn't say she was little, but we saw, you know, one lonely elk up there. And I'm like, there's no way the whole little herd busted out without this one. So I'll bet they're all up there. Okay, so then we split up. And my idea behind this that. This is where everything went bad. Yeah. So my idea <laughs> behind that. We're almost at the end of the show. Just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my idea behind the splitting up was like, the wind is going right to left. So it's in our favor. They're in front of us. And we had to go down and then up to the ridge of the shelf, right? So we, we got down and we're out of sight and we split up. And I thought, well, if we get up there and one of us bumps, we're going to bump it to the other guy. So I thought, okay, and, but if they bump out away from us, then if we're together, it's just as bad as if we're apart. So it's not going to make a difference. So I thought, well, this will work to our advantage. We probably would have been better off staying together. I don't know. Were they, were they, uh, they were still feeding at this time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Head, heads were down. So as we're creeping in, you start to see more elk that are walking around because the shelf was more of like a, it was a, a dip. Yeah, like so a bowl. It, yeah, it was a bowl. So and over the edge. No, they guys, Did you make it to the edge of the bowl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so but you guys at, were on a downward slope going towards them. Uh, yeah. We would have if we had crested over. So you didn't crest over. I didn't crest over. I got to the top on my side, and I was using the trees to like you know like uh, skip from one tree to the next to yeah. use them as concealment terrain. Yeah, and so I got to one tree, and I'm like ranging them. And the majority of them were out beyond 90 from me, except this one that was right at 80. And so I was like, well, 80 is too far. I wonder if I can get a little closer. So I, I then I'm, I'm moving a little closer because I'm, I'm still back from the tree. So I used the tree to get close. And then at the tree, I was like 72. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, there's a log. Now I'm starting to crest. There's nothing in between. It crests down and comes up to her, and she's at a tree. There was no other real trees between me and her, just that log. So I, I'm like, okay, I'm all ready to go. I know that when I step out, I'm going to be like 68, 70-ish, right? So I dial my sight because I have a single pin, and I dial my sight to 70, and I step out, and, it's, and her head was down when I started to step out. As soon as I stepped out, she looked right at me. I'm like, oh, no. So I just froze. She didn't like my silhouette now because I'm apart from the tree. I'm like, oh, man. Okay, just be calm, be calm. Don't go anywhere. Chill out, little lady. And she was like, nope, I don't like you. And she started to move a little bit, like two or three yards further up this little hole or this hill. And I was like, okay, I got to take my shot now because she's going to move out of even further out of range and I'm not going to get any closer. So I knew she was at 70. So I drew back, settled in. Put my pin right where I wanted it, and sent it, and that arrow left and right was money, and it went right over her back. At least from my perspective, my angle, that's what it looked like. It looked like it went right over her back. I thought she maybe ducked it at, <laughs> for a second because as soon as it went over her back, she like kind of bowed her back and like skipped forward and went up this hill. And then I thought maybe I hit her because her back legs kind of did that buckle, and she looked a little wobbly, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Maybe I hit her, right? <laughs> Instantly turned into a caveman. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so now I'm like, okay, I got to look for blood. So I get my binos out and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And she had turned broadside uh, a couple different ways heading up this hill away from us. And now we're cow calling, like keep the herd close to us. And I'm like looking through my binos. I can't see a drop of anything. 
coming off of her body. Oh, on the elk? Yeah. So, you know. Nothing. When you make a shot, there's, there's, there's two things happen, right? There's an, there's an action and reaction. Mm-hmm. So the elk is either taking an action. Like if you said he, she ducked it, she's taking an evasive action, right? She's right? like, yeah, yeah. oh, I hear something coming. Boom, let me get out the way. Or she gets hit and that causes her to make an action. Mm-hmm. Or the arrow goes by and hits the brush and she does that. Right. Or the back reaction. So that could have been what you saw was a reaction to the sound on her. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what, that's Mm -hmm. exactly what it was. Cause from my perspective, I was dick in the dirt crawling on, on my belly. Cause I'm at about 93 yards to the closest elk to me. Um, I was actually probably like 82 or three yards though from a couple calves, which I wasn't going to shoot at. Um, so I'm crawling in being super silent and I got a bunch of little Christmas trees in front of me and they're probably like two and a half feet tall, you know, and I'm just going, I get to a stump and I kind of just stop. I'm looking at, you know, what's going on. All their heads are on the ground. Mowing down. Now I did see the, the elk that Dustin was looking at and her head was up, but she was more not paying attention to him, but all the other elk. She was the lead cow. So, you know, Elk's eyeballs can almost see 360. So she barely has to, like, move her head, and she can pretty much see everything. So I don't know if the cow is actually necessarily looking straight at you. But, you know, from my perspective, it's completely different from what you were looking at. Yeah, she had me. (laughs) She had me. You know, when they're looking at you, she was looking at me. But anyway, so I took the shot, and... Uh, I missed, and that's the first time I've ever had a shot opportunity on elk with a bow. So I'll tell you what, I had one this year too, and I missed it. Here's the fact. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And here's another fact. So far you missed 100% of so the shot you did take. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the, the helpful <laughs> fact. Hey, I missed one this year too, and it was closer than that. So yeah. it's, Don't worry about it, gotta, man. <laughs> yeah, You got to take a shot. if you. I haven't missed yet. Yeah, if you get, <laughs> you didn't take a shot. I'm two for two, buddy. Yeah. Well, if you have, um, you have, you're you're constantly evaluating your option, right? This is my option. I either have to take the shot or not. I mean, whenever you're in the woods, you have the opportunity in front of you. If you if you think this is your best chance, you, know, you take. It's good to take your best chance. You know, yeah. Not, not like okay, it was seventy. I'll wait for it to get to 80 and 70. A lot of people argue is probably a touch far, but a lot of people would, would um, take that shot all day, especially wide open. Well, well, I mean, this is not a small animal either. No. You're not shooting at a, a deer, no. you know, yeah. um, um, and, it's a big animal. Elk is a very large animal in 70 yards. That's I mean, a, I should have had that. And like, that's a very doable shot. I do that shot in 3d competition, like a lot. So here's, I, I wouldn't here, say I pin ring it, but I definitely hit foam in a vital lethal area. Yeah. Well, here's the thing though, too. Uh, a 3D shoot, you're not going to have the adrenaline. Sure. You know, you're not going to have the elements. You're not going to, you know, have the the two miles of terrain that we just had to go go through. Sure. Have the highs and lows of mm-hmm. not seeing anything, and then we are on them again, and then, yeah. you know, it, it, the... There, there is a huge difference. I wasn't feeling nerves about the shot. Like this isn't my first rodeo. It's not like the first no, time, no. You know, I'm taking down an animal. Like I, I've, I've harvested quite a few animals, but, um, yeah, man, it's just super frustrating that I missed and I just kicking myself in the butt over it. Every um, opportunity is different, man. Like I've, I've missed. I can't. I don't know if it's four, but I know I missed three black bears with a rifle. And some of them were pretty dang close. Yeah. Luke's counting seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been eight. <laughs> I'll say three. Hey, I haven't Wait, shot I'll give, any I'll give you bears, four. So. Mercy four, three okay? Four. Yeah. <laughs> I, miss, I missed them at all ranges. And um, just I get jacked up, man, because of something sure. I haven't done. You throw a deer in front of me or, you know, something that's more common that I do all the time, no problem. Don't even think about right. it. But we laugh after every time. It's always a good time. Yeah, yeah, right? like, yeah. We're not worried about the the ones I missed. It's it's good yeah. that you had the opportunity. Yeah, and I mean, 
I called you guys because it was dark. I was like, yeah. where the heck are they at? I haven't heard from them all We day. didn't plan on being out that late. <laughs> yeah, it could have been a lot. And it, and it was in the 20s this week. So at night, it was low 20s probably. Yeah, it was and cold. It was crispy for sure. So I was, I was getting, I wasn't concerned at this point. I just wanted to make sure you guys were, had a plan of action. We're on the way somewhere. So yeah, I called and it's like 530 and you're like, yeah, we're like eight miles from the truck. And I was like, okay, well. Post me and send me your Onyx and, and post me up when you get to the truck, you know? And yeah. Let me know that you made it back there. Mm-hmm. And so that was pretty much the communication. But if you if you go that whole way and you say, yeah, I didn't even get a shot, you know, it's the last day of the year. Yeah, we could have you know? not seen anything. Yeah. And that would have been bummer. Yeah. And, was, I mean, that's what it was looking like. Yeah, I mean. we it, spotted those elk. When, when I mean. he spotted the, the elk, we were talking about getting on the bikes and, like, slow hunting all the way back because we were, like, six, seven miles in, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I was planning on going to work. <laughs> uh, but then he spotted those elk, and I'm like, well, we can get over there, so let's try it, you know? And then we got over there, and we got an opportunity. I shot. He was at full draw. Um, and then that cow buggered out. And then, like, it was kind of funny because after I took my shot, we were cow calling on him. All seven held up for a while. They just sat there and, like, yeah. We couldn't get any closer because they would have buggered out. We were trying to bring them back down to us because they were all at like 140 for me. Uh, I can't take that shot. Yeah, I was at about 103. Yeah. yeah they just had fun. to come back down the hill just a little bit, and I would have been able to shoot them. But they they didn't move. They were all held up. Cause, well, I mean, you know, you cow call. They're looking for a cow. Like, hey, where's this cow at? So, I mean, if maybe if we had a decoy or something. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they would have relaxed again. Because yeah. all they heard was the crack of the arrow. Yeah, and I didn't move after the shot. Oh. I just stood there. They just stood around? No, stood. I stood around. Oh. So the cow that he shot at actually wasn't running away. She just kind of like did the little dip, mm-hmm. you know? She came, came up the hill about... 15, around, 20 yards. Oh, Maybe not even that. She just kind of like went around this bush. And she was, was like, what the heck was that? None of the other elk really moved. Until she started going all the way up because she was the lead cow. So when she started going up a little bit higher, they would all move up like another 10 or 15 yards, just really slow. And then they stopped. Yeah. But this is where I was telling De- Dustin to shut his mouth because he was doing a cow call with his mouth. Yeah. He got him to stop. It was weird. I was just like, oh, crap. He yeah. freaking got him to stop. But he kept on doing it because they would start to feed and then he would do it again. And all their heads would go well, and look the, at him. The calves were, were calling back at us. But... They were starting to settle down and going back into feeding. So I was like, oh, man, if they start feeding again, I can still crawl up. I can get a shot because I had a bunch of brush in front of me. Like, I can make my way through. Um, but every single time they would start to feed, he would cow call again, and all their heads would just go and look at him. I'm like, <laughs> that's true. I was like, gosh, dang well, it. I was no, trying to bring I it actually, back down. They I, actually ye- I actually yelled at him. I was like, Dustin, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here digging the dirt. Yeah. Um. You know, there's no wrong way to sk- eat a Reese's, you know? So it just kind of, it is what it is. I mean, we, we talked about last uh, episode, communication with Devin and you and shooting or not shooting and all that other stuff. And this is part of that too. I will say leading up into that moment though. Our well, we we had a good point, game plan. Man. We we, were we had like, a good game plan. So you tell me when the shit hit the fan, you two fell apart. Basically, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, man. When you dude, get... my head was still in the game, dude. Yeah. There was a uh, there was six hey. or seven more elk up on top of this other hill, That's and I went mean. down and around. And yeah, I, I saw J.R. Smith get a rebound in the finals and dribble out to half court with no time on the clock. You know, so you could be the only person thinking about something, and the other pe- people are like, okay, they're doing something different. So staying on that same page, like, are we calling cows if they're walking away? How's that worked in the past? How do you feel about it? I mean, it uh, was definitely a learning thing. experience. Yeah, I mean, I, I after every year, anybody that hunts, mm-hmm. if they're like, nah, I know it all. I'm never hunting with that person. No, oh, no I would man. definitely yeah. hunt with them again. Yeah, yeah you, you got to take every single day or even step in the woods and take it as a learning experience, no matter if it was bad or good. Yeah. I, had I mean, a if it was... 100% awesome, you're going to take that and be like, okay, what worked in this whole scenario? Like, why why did I get this shot or how did this make how did I make this happen so I can replicate that and do it again? Yeah. Or what how did I booger this up to where I don't do that again? Right. Or learn from that experience. Well, Luke, Luke knows for many years we just had a all we did was screw up. Like yeah. I it was like 
I, I thought I should write a book on what not to do elk hunting. And then someone else can like read that and be like, I'm not doing any of this stuff. And then finally I was like, you know what? I have to take a shot. I was waiting for that perfect shot. Like I have to take a shot. And then when I shot my first worst, yeah, picture, this cow here. Yeah. It was like 46 yards downhill. It's like almost straight downhill in Luke and Billy were on the backside of this massively long train of elk. There had to have been 40 something elk in the line when I shot her. And um, they were down on creek bottom. And I drew three or four times at different elk. And they would just slow down as they were trying to cross this creek. Right. Finally, they got backed up to where they had to stop. But I could have thought, oh, there's a lot of brush in my way. It's not totally clear. Because I actually had to lob the arrow. And it was it, it was a lob over. I mean, you can clearly see it arc over these vine maples. Oh, it was right, right in the middle it. of your arch. Oh, yeah. It was perfect. And uh, younger me would not have taken that shot. I'd be like, nope, there's branches in the way. Mm -hmm. but you know shooting this bow and knowing all the things i know about my bow and right. like sitting here going okay halfway down the hill these branches are covering the kill zone but my arrow was really kind of like arc i took that shot and it was like as soon as those fletchings disappeared in her armpit i just turned around threw my hands in the air chris is like what happened <laughs> i was like she's she's freaking dead dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she was she was literally dead she she went down there busted a tree in half about an eight inch tree she ran over it and it was older like a rotten tree not a yeah. healthy tree got to the creek all the other elk were crossing the creek she decided can't make that can't make that creek spun in a circle and fell right in the middle of this circle of, of, of you know yeah circle of death right there cool that was a shot i wouldn't have taken before but um i learned some lessons i was like i have to take a shot so sometimes you have to do it you just you're, you're down to your last chance yeah, I mean it was by. it was the last day. It was, yeah, it, was. it seriously was the Hail Mary. It yep. it just didn't the arrow just didn't make it didn't make contact. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think yeah, I think a lot of it is you know, there's a couple of things we said. You know, my dad one time we were going hunting. Yeah, we should go hunting. Start watching TV. How do we go hunting? We don't ever see anything. I was like, Well you sure as hell us he's not there watch TV. Right? Yeah. So so when we learn, we learn that we can be too aggressive, we can be too conservative. Yeah, we can overshoot, we can undershoot, but it's hunting. You know, let's get out there, have fun, let's have a good time. Right. You never really know what the right decision is because each animal has its own train of thought as well. So, but if you don't get out there in the woods, you're definitely gonna get nothing. Yeah. You try to shoot it. Right. You're definitely ain't shooting it. You know, so just go and have fun and try to learn something every season. Yeah, we yep. we definitely had fun. That ride out was uh, I've never ridden in the dark at like. <laughs> 15 miles an hour on my bike oh we're hauling ass pitch black with just our little headlamps on and i'm like please don't crash please don't crash the whole way back i'm just like i don't want to wreck right here i don't want to wreck right here. yeah we were flying it's yeah, mostly he, downhill the whole way back he kept on looking back and i'm like dude you're gonna go off the road i was like if you hear me say oh shit then i crashed <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um you know that's a different challenge but at least you guys had a chance yeah, you gave yourself a good opportunity mm -hmm. getting a shot on the last day. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that didn't have a shot on the last day. And we met one of those guys who had several shots throughout the season. Yeah, a guy named Sam. Yeah, he took the whole uh, late season off, and he had quite a few opportunities, and just didn't get it. Just didn't make it happen. Yeah, that happens, man. Well, yeah. Some of it is sometimes you gotta do things you don't want to do. I heard we got in on September. We wouldn't have gone to the next corner. We never would have heard him break a stick. You know, after we saw the security guy. I was like, oh! <laughs> we were getting ready to turn around. I was like, let's go to that next corner. That's one thing I really love about hunting western Washington. That so, next corner. I don't like eastern Washington at all. Right. Zero. You can you see, see a thousand, hundred east corners. You see, yeah. a, you see a thousand yards. Guess what you got to walk across to see the next thousand yards of nothing. Right. A thousand yards. Western Washington's like, let's get that next corner. You might smell something. You might see a track or something right and quite often that's the case you go that next corner yeah 200 yards damn there's the elk no that's so funny that you something. say that luke because we were on a road and and we were like i don't know what, what, what we should do we should keep going and i'm like well let's just go down that next corner and see what we can see if there's nothing there then we'll start back <laughs> there's been a, a hundred times where i've been hunting in like yeah i should probably find another spot and i've i've talked myself into talked myself into uh probably a couple miles of like just 100 yards just 100 yards just 100 yards yeah 
This section of the broadcast is brought to you by Burpaw. Burpaw.com. Use Ridge 15 at checkout to receive a sweet discount. But you have to talk yourself along the way, you know, like when you just feel like, no, oh, this isn't working out. Luke's right. We had, we were in there, I don't know if it was a mile and a half or two on this one road. And I can't remember what we heard or saw first or if we had heard or seen anything, but we literally went down a little bit more. I think we smelled something is what happened. And we're like, oh, let's go down here a little bit to this one corner where the road kind of hooks back to the right. And we got to that corner and there was a snap in a mew and it was right there, right below us. And there's, you couldn't kill a cow in there, but there was a little herd of elk down there. And uh, she was just going down through these devil's clubs and walked up the other side, just kind of walking around. I was like, damn, looking at her right there, like, geez, where's the bull? Mm -hmm. We happened to get into the bull the last day, or some bulls, the last day of our hunt was pretty dang awesome. You know, we got into um, a, a bull that morning. Um, and after that, we got the heck out of there and closed down camp, got back to town. But that was a stellar hunt. Yeah. You know, I think we... In our position, I think we could have, we probably should have got down the hill further quicker because he was coming. I mean, he came quick. Yeah. I, when I initially, I can't remember if I cow called or what did I do. We did a locator call. Locator. And we had three bulls answer back. Pew, 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 all in a different angle. And it was like, <gasps> deep breath. I was like, oh shit, let's get around here. Luke's like, let's go down this road and try to get a better entrance because it's really steep right here. So we got down there and, uh, um, yeah, yeah, tie yourself to a rope type, Steve, yeah. You're slippery going down. <laughs> You're going all the way. So um, I can't remember if it was a cow call or another bull call, um, but I, I heard he the, quite a bit. I heard him bugle back, and I was like, Luke, the elk's coming up this way. He's like, oh, I didn't hear it. And then he heard it after the second one, and then he was chuckling close. I mean, he came in when, from the first time I heard him, a couple hundred yards away. Second time I heard him, 140, maybe, but chuckling. And so we tried getting down there and he only came up so far and then we didn't get the, we did, obviously didn't get a shot, but he was only going to come into a hundred yards. If we would have, we would have been moving, you know, but we, there's no way we could have known what direction he was coming in. The wind was a little bit tricky and then it started to make this weird taper. So we tried to work him up mm -hmm. when we would have easily probably scored on him if we would have gone down fast sure. because he was on his way. Yeah. He wasn't playing around. Well, yeah. Well, and backtrack into that first herd we got into when the herd snapped the stick. We were able to get a direction of where they were headed, which actually back to the truck, which is great. And so we looped around them. We sat there like, man, they got to be coming here. We didn't walk very far. I mean, 30, 40 minutes we were sitting there, and all of a sudden, we're hearing sticks break. Coming in. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. And then I, I had a spike bull come out 30 yards in front of me, and I felt, felt the wind shift in the back of my neck. Bull takes off, dogging. I'm like, oh no! They just kept blowing and blowing. Probably two minutes later, you just hear the herd take off. Oh man! But, but you know, again, kind of going back to that, just keep pushing, keep trying, stay positive. It's probably like a lot of the motives of life, right? Or right. You know, mentos of life. You know, just sure. keep doing it. Just go forward, press on. Same thing with hunting. Don't give up. Yeah. If you go back to camp because you're you're sad. Yeah. You ain't gonna get nothing in camp. Yeah. Except a hangover and nap time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I never, I never gone back to camp because I was sad, but I have arrived there sad. <laughs> <laughs> like son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. What happened to you, Dave? You don't want to know. Yeah, I've been, I, I haven't really been sad. I've been like flustered, you know, like dang it, man, I'm doing all this work. Yeah, yeah, disappointed, frustrated, and and it's, it goes away almost instantly. When because I mean, you got to get ready for the next day. Like you, you have to push and 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 charge forward again. You know, it's like, all right, we got tomorrow morning. We're gonna hit it again. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, that was pretty much my whole elk season. Like we weren't seeing or hearing jack yeah, crap. Well, you had so, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you can't hear Luke, he was like, you got one of your greatest opportunities sick a couple years ago. Um, yeah, I have. So I had to have my gallbladder removed. Um, I was having severe stomach pains and, um, that day, you know, everybody's getting ready and they're like, all right, Dave, let's go. And I'm like, dude, I ain't going nowhere. And they're like, what? And I'm like, my stomach hurts so freaking bad. And they're like, oh, just, you know, take a shit. You'll be fine. I'm like, no, it's not, a, it's not shit pain, man. Like something's wrong with my stomach. And, uh, so I basically just bummed around camp and just hung out 
I'll tell you something funny about that is is me and Luke are leaving we're like man I can't believe Dave's just sitting at stay in camp like that like what I said it's been a rough hunt but damn he's just like now his stomach's making him stay so that that was a conversation <laughs> that took Pelly's hey, yeah now, no that's a that's that fine me, yeah and I was like I can't we were talking about it I was like damn I can't believe he's sitting there yeah he's just I'm like not on that the couch. Guy, I'm not that person that will. I'm not that person. Like, well, I didn't yeah, realize I, you had an actual or like an organ failure or something going on here. Yeah, and like, I was. Yeah, you know, I just like you're like now nah, my stomach hurts. I'm like, well, I never let a stomach hurt. Like, you weren't very I was, descriptive. Like, I was double I over in pain. If I don't, I just wasn't this, trying to show show that I was like dying. Yeah, he was, <laughs> from our vision, he was just sitting on the couch like, nah, my stomach hurts. <laughs> like, what right. the heck? Your yeah. stomach hurts? So, I'm like, that's kind of weak. Uh, but he's trying to he's trying to disguise the amount of pain he was actually in. Yeah. So it's important to to relay that. Like, no, you don't understand. I feel like I'm dying or whatever. Right. But he had to have surgery and have his gallbladder removed. So that's like obviously what we're seeing is wasn't uh, relative to how he felt. Right. You know. So we we'd gone out and we were doing some glassing and spotted some elk. And I was like, oh, let's go back to camp and get Dave. Freaking Dave shoots. How many points was that bull? It was a five by four. Five by four bull. All bladder pain, everything. As soon as we said we found some milk, he looks up at us and he's like, okay. <laughs> like, damn. So, it, was a, it was a lot of work, too, man. I went up a freaking, I don't know, giant mountain. <laughs> several hundred yards, almost, you know, 60 degree angle. And then um, when he really turned into a savage and he was trying to drag it down a hole, we just had to calm him down. Like, calm down, gallbladder, you're good. <laughs> Let's get it down the road. Down, down, down. And he was just hugging on this sucker. It's right. crazy. That was, yeah, one of his greatest days. That's awesome. From zero to mount high, you know, as high as you can get. From zero to hero. Well, I zero to high as you can get. Yeah, I wouldn't and say no hero. Emotional, stuff, but... you know, emotional highs. Um, because it was it was one of those things where this we had watched this elk mounting several cows. I mean, he was running them around. He clearly wasn't suffering from a gallbladder issue. <laughs> No, the, oh, he was no. gonna have yeah. He had other issues coming his way. <laughs> he was he had a full full whole whole lot of issues coming his way. But yeah, yeah, it was a great hunt, man. I that was really fun to watch. I'd never actually watched it happen before in the way it happened. But um, you know where I was from my vantage point, I was just filming the elk because the wind was blowing from my right to my left, and then I would have to go uphill um, around the backside of a knob. Or these elk couldn't see me, and the wind would have pushed into their, into their scent line. So I just elected to stay put. Where he and Luke were coming around from the backside, and Luke was on the bottom, and Dave went around this backside of a knob behind a little thicket, and then got up above them on this tree line. Right. And so, ultimately, they were they were probably eighty yards from where Dave was at, and then he cow called. They were kind of already working towards the trees, and then he cow called, and I watched the cow like poke her head up. And she just started marching straight towards him, man. And then they were all in behind him, all in behind her. And next thing you know, you hear, woo! And this elk comes freaking <laughs> running down the hill, right? He's like, calls us up, elk down, elk down. I was like, yeah, I just seen him go in this little ditch. He should be right below you. And he sure shit, man, right there. Didn't even go up another hill. No, he went about 40 or 50 yards and front flipped. He was toast. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, that was great. Well, I just want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for having me on. Um, and uh, thank you for coming out and hunting with me. Yeah, no, that was awesome, man. We had, thank we you. Had a blast, even though, you know, we learned more than we talk or than we took home. Uh, uh, but looking back at it, had we downed that elk, oh, man, we'd probably still be out there. Yeah, we'd have. <laughs> like we're, 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 bike, we're biking back, you know, and we're like, holy crap. Like, we'd have to come back a couple times. Yeah. Because the, the cow he would have hit was massive. It was a big cow. So quartering it up and getting it out, it would have took some time. Like, it would have been a late night, midnight for sure. Oh, yeah, at least. I just call out the next day, you know. I called out of that that evening anyways because <laughs> I was yeah. like, but well, yeah. It was cold enough, though. You could have just quartered it and pulled Hung it. it, yeah. We don't really yeah. have, like, bears here like you would be concerned about. No. Coyotes would probably be your bigger concern. Coyotes or cougars. But, yeah, just tie it up to a tree and back tomorrow morning man get your stuff yeah. mm -hmm. take one load out and all works so i won't be there tomorrow right yeah, all right man nice. i appreciate it dustin sounds like you guys had a, uh an awesome eventful fun and It'll definitely be a chapter in some book someday for two days for two days 
We saw over 30 elk. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it was awesome. And like a handful of deer. Yeah, not very many deer. Six deer. Well, we almost hit that rabbit on the way out on our bikes. <laughs> yeah, almost oh. had some rabbits too. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. All right, well. Yeah, well, that's going to be it for the episode today. Um, this is actually going to be our last episode of the year. We're going to take a couple of weeks off for the holidays, and we'll be back in 23. And we have some um, announcements coming up um, for 23. We're bringing on a couple more sponsors, and we're, we're pretty excited about it. And then also in the beginning of February, we have the Sportsman Show. So if you are in the Puyallup, Washington area and want to come check us out, we will be at the Sportsman Show, um, I think, Thursday through Sunday. Uh, we will not be there the opening day, but Thursday through Sunday we will be there and we'll be all set up. So if you want to come by, tell us a hunting story or something like that, we'll get you on the podcast. So... Yeah, that will be it for 22, and we're going to be jumping into 23, and it's going to be a good one. Well, thank you.